Hello, everyone. How are you? I am Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL. Please subscribe on YouTube. I have a new channel up there, getting a bunch of all my stuff there at once. Folks, this podcast is a big one. This is a big one. This is the final exam of the, the class you've been working on all year. Class really wasn't my bag. However, I do this every year and I tweak it like Every day. I always get down to a couple weeks away from the draft. I'll probably revisit it Tuesday or Wednesday next week. We're within 10 days of the draft now, almost a week away. But here's what I do. And a lot of teams do this. I think the Steelers do this. And I think it's very smart. Is you build your board. Now, this is just a horizontal or a, a vertical board. This is just one after another after another for your specific team. And I did this for the Steelers. Now, much of it doesn't matter. I mean, Caleb Williams is on this list. And because they picked 20, you would think you'd do your top 20. I went further than that. I mean, because these are guys I want that I'm comfortable with. I didn't have a distinct cutoff of, I'm only going to do 22, 24. I cut it off when I thought... I would be very comfortable with any of these players in a trade down situation, basically. So I'm kind of dancing around what I'm talking about here. This is my big board. If the Steelers had the first pick in the draft, if you rub the bottle and a genie comes out and is Robin Williams voice and says, dun, 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 we just granted you the first pick in the draft. Who would you take? And then you look at it as we granted you the second pick in the draft and your first choice was gone. Who would you take? Now, obviously, if by chance the Steelers would have made a deal with the Panthers last draft that yielded them the first overall pick, their offseason would have been different. They would have traded for Fields, most likely. I mean, they, they would have been in the Bears situation. You know, where would Pickett be? Where would Wilson be? Et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter. The Steelers are not going to end up with Caleb Williams or whoever. But I looked, so I didn't spend a ton of time with the top six, seven, whatever. The the, the guys that aren't going to be Steelers. However, I think a smart way to look at this is who would I take worst case scenario? So, like, there are no linebackers on my list. There are no running backs on my list. There's one tight end. You probably could figure out who. Although I don't think tight end's a need. But there's a point where Brock Bowers would benefit the Steelers more than this many people and less than this many people. I don't have any edge rushers on here. I don't love this edge rushing class, but I don't think that's something that would help the Steelers. I recognize that Dallas Turner is one of the best 15 players, in my opinion, in this draft, but not for me, not for the black and gold. I would rather take a receiver who's probably a lesser grade than Dallas Turner. So you see where I'm going with this. This is who would I take if my favorite player was off the board? So let's get into this. And I tweak it all the time. Little ones, you know, and I'll get to some of the ones that are hard for me. But first off, Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up-to-the-minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Super easy. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team, and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, capital B-L-E-A-V, for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Again, remember the parameters. Genie comes out of a bottle, says, Hey, Matt, you're not, you are now in charge of the Steelers draft, and they have the first pick in the draft. Who are you taking? And I would take Caleb Williams. Now, I don't want to hear, Well, we got Russell Wilson and we got Fields, and, you know, what would we do with them? Well, 
I don't care. I'm taking the franchise quarterback. Think about it. If you had the first pick in the draft, you have to take Caleb Williams if you're the Steelers or your favorite quarterback. My second favorite quarterback is Drake May. He would be my second choice. So if I have the second pick in the draft, Jeannie comes down and says, you have pick number two, but Caleb Williams is off the board. Who are you going to pick? Drake May. Now we could get into, well, then you could trade Russell Wilson, but we're, I don't care because none of this stuff's going to happen at the top. Number three for me is Marvin Harrison Jr. Number four is Malik Neighbors. Number five is Roma Dunze. So folks, this, this is how when Kevin Colbert would go to the podium after the draft and be like, he was our eighth player on the board and we got him at 20. Well, it can happen because their board will look different. Like, so when we get into the tackles, they very well could be your eighth player, but you get him at 20 because for you, he's number eight. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, those three, three receivers, three, four, five, there's only two players on this draft. I would take over those receivers if I was the Steelers as currently constructed. Now, I guess you could start to think, wow, it's amazing. Roma Dunze is falling to 12. He's my fifth player on the board. Is it worth calling Team 12 to make that kind of move? Maybe. I then have Jaden Daniels from Splitting Hairs. He could have been ahead of those three receivers or behind. Whatever. None of those guys would be Steelers. Those three quarterbacks, those three receivers, I probably spent too much time on already. Joe Alt is next. And here comes the tackle run. Because if those six are gone and I'm picking seven through 11, I'm taking a tackle in this order. Alt, Latham, Fatanu, Fashanu, Fuaga, all of whom I love. I dinged Penn State Fashanu a little because I'd prefer to draft a right tackle than a left tackle. And that's... Something to be considered with Fatanu from Washington as well. He was in for a visit yesterday or earlier this week. I'm sure they had that discussion. I think he would be he would go to the right side easier than Fashanu, though. And Fawaga's last of that group, first off, because that group's awesome. And I have some slight doubts more than the others on Fawaga if he's a tackle or a guard because of his arm length. Some of these... Pass rushers will attack his outside arm, and you can see his lack of length hurting him a little bit. So that's why I made him last of those fantastic five, we'll call them, whatever. So that's my top 11. So again, let's say Troy Fatanu from Washington, who was in on a visit, falls to 20. If I was the GM of the Steelers and I was being honest with the media, which I wouldn't be, I would say we got our ninth overall player at 20. And fans and media would be like, yeah, right. Sure you did. That doesn't happen. Yeah, it does. For us, he would be my ninth ranked player. So, okay, now we're through the top 11. The three quarterbacks, the three receivers are gone. The five tackles. Boom. I lumped them all together on purpose. Then there's a little bit of no man's land here. Okay, so I have the 12th overall pick, and those 11 that I adore are all gone. I would take J.J. McCarthy. There's a spot. I have some doubts about him, but quarterbacks are super important. Maybe sit him a year, whatever. I don't care. But at some point, he has to be on this list, as does Brock Bowers, who I have at 13. Do they need a tight end? No. If I was just putting generic grades on all these players, Bowers would probably be a top eight player. Would the Steelers have a use for him? Yes. <laughs> would use him like Allen Robinson last year, but way better and does a lot more. So there is a point where you take Brock Bowers. Now, here's where it got really sticky for me. And here's probably where we'll fight. Well, there's been a couple spots where we're probably going to fight. So my next four, but really my next two, I've switched many times. So if those 13 are gone, I would then take Cooper DeGene. But that 14th spot has been 
Mims Dejean. Dejean Mims. I change it twice a day. Right now, I think it's Dejean. He's safer. You pick him in the first round. You kill a lot of birds with one stone in your secondary. Mims might not be plug and play day one because he's so raw. But he's also so talented, kind of like Roger Jones, that he can get away with being wrong more than others. You just throw him in the fire at right tackle and coach him up, and his mistakes aren't as bad as others because he's so gifted. He's the most polarizing player or hit or miss player in this whole draft. I mean, he could be the best right tackle in football in three years, or he could be a bust. So what does that cost? So Dejean, so that really is when it starts to get real. Dejean could be there at 20. Mims could be there at 20. You could have this discussion. I, right now, prefer Dejean. Then Mims. Then Brian Thomas from LSU. And part of this is just because there's a lot of receivers I like on day two. And receivers are something you can get. But he would be awesome. I think Adani Mitchell's right behind him. I, I think Thomas and Mitchell are right next to each other. So this foursome of DeGene, Mims, Brian Thomas, Adani Mitchell is clustered there on purpose because I think they probably will have something resembling that discussion when the 20th pick shows up. Now, one of the tackles, Fawaga, Fashanu, could be there, Latham. Great. But if they're all gone and these four are sitting there and you could trade back to 24, 25 and know you get one of them, That's appealing to me. So here's where I, these two were tough for me because my next two at 18 and 19 are Quinion Mitchell and Terry and Arnold. And you could put them possibly ahead of the group we just talked about. I'm torn who is the better prospect, DeGene, Arnold, or Mitchell. But I don't think the Steelers need outside guys as much as they need the do-it-all Dejean. So for me, I would prefer Dejean for the Steelers. And a lot of it's because I'm taking their leap of faith that they like Dane Jackson and they have some other project, big outside corners. And I know Arnold can play the slot. And I think Mitchell's a really good player. But if they're the top guy on the board, I would probably be like, who wants to trade up and get him? I'll move back a couple spots and take Amarius Mims or Dejean or somebody like that. Next up, at 20th overall and 21 overall. So, if I was in charge and my favorite 19 players happened to come off the board, 1 through 19, no edge guys, none of those dudes, I would take Graham Barton. Right behind him, I have Jackson Powers Johnson. I think Barton's a little safer. Medically, versatility, athletically, but I like both a ton. So, I know you guys are into centers. I get it. I did not want to drop them too far. But if I was sitting there at 20 and I'm torn between Terry and Arnold or Graham Barton, I would take Arnold. But if my favorite 19 were gone, I would take Barton at 20, which isn't going to happen, which means maybe your favorite or maybe 24 are gone and you could get Barton at 25. You see what I'm saying? Then at 22, I go Nate Wiggins, who's also just an outside kind of finesse corner, but I respect him a great deal. I just don't love the fit here. I have defensive tackle Jerzon Newton at 23, and that's kind of an odd one because he doesn't fit the team. I almost left him and Brian Murphy or Byron Murphy off of this list. But there's a point where If I can add him in and he plays 60% of the snaps, particularly on pass rush downs, I'm willing to use a high pick, my first pick on that, because I think him and Murphy are that good. So I have Newton at 23, I have Murphy at 25, and I stuck Tyler Guyton just in between there, who's to me a little bit lesser version of Mims in terms of ceiling. But you could also make the, 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 the argument that maybe Guyton should go ahead of Wiggins, ahead of Newton. He, I do have him ahead of Murphy. But we're kind of getting in no man's land here. I mean, like in this neighborhood, I don't know you'd pull the trigger on a Newton or a Murphy. But I did want to build the board bigger than 20 players. 
My last three are Kool-Aid McKinstry, who I think is worthy of being my first overall pick. But he's an outside corner as well. And I, I rec- recognize those don't grow on trees and you can't have too many. And hey, we'll figure out the whole slot situation if we have three stud corners. That's certainly attractive. And then my last two might shock you. And in a major trade down, I could live with Lad McConkey and Ricky Pearsall as my first pick off the board. Now, they're my 27th and 28th players overall on Matt Steeler big board. But if the price was unbelievably right, the Chiefs want to move from 32 to 20, and my favorite 26 are gone, okay, I can live with Matt Lad McConkey because they gave me so many other things. I got their first round pick next year, something else, whatever. There's always a price. So you have to build boards this way as a worst case scenario. If we move back to 24, worst case scenario is we get Tyler Guyton. Can I live with that? Okay. Yeah, I can live with that if you give me X to make me move back. Or better yet, you're on the clock at 20. And there's five guys you're comfortable with. I might look to move back four or five, six spots. See what I'm saying? And it never comes to this. But as we said before, Graham Barton is my 20th player. They own the 20th pick. You're not going to take him at 20 because somebody else is going to go in the top 19. Is the top 19 going to be totally void of edge pass rushers? No. So you pretty much know I'm not going to end up with Graham Barton at 20. That would be worst case scenario. And in that case, it's not like I can live with it. You have no choice. You have to live with it. If if your favorite 19 players go, worst case scenario, and nobody's on the phone, you take Graham Barton. And if there's no edge rushers drafted, which won't happen, or no surprises that I haven't listed here. So this is an exercise I do every year. I do it very late in the process because I kind of want to finalize my draft board as teams do are doing now and i might tweak it again in the next couple days and we'll do it through it again next week but comment all you want i'm sure a lot of you have some issues with it i totally understand that but you have to think about it through that lens all right take care